Jeff Quire on stage. Hey, whenever you're ready, buddy. <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Have you, Christmas. you have something to say, Alan? No, I'm just saying hi. Oh, okay, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Give you guys a little bow your heads as I pray. All right, me, Father. We get there here today to give you thanks for your name, to celebrate your gift, your son, our Redeemer and Savior. I also received the lesson provided by Pastor Chad with open ears so that we can feed the needy and those in need, maybe throughout the rest of the week. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Good morning. Good morning. Good to see everybody out this morning. I, uh, I gotta be honest with you, I didn't think we'd have this kind of crowd. Uh, I'm very, very pleased. Very pleased. I know the, I know the Lord's pleased. That's that's the main one. Hope everybody had a good Christmas morning. And um, I, want, I want everybody to sing nice and loud. Either sing nice and loud or move move to the front. It's your choice. But nice and loud. All right. Um, oh, where's that at in here? We're singing away in a manger, but I can't find the uh, name. I can't find the name of it in here. Huh? Uh, drag three. Oh, yeah. Way in a manger, not in this book. Not in this book. You gotta be kidding me. All right, well, everybody got one of them? I'm pretty sure it's in that one. Favorite, favorite hymns, yeah. What page? Um, let me see. 93. 93? Page 93. <clears throat> I believe it's not that old. I thought it was named something else. Everybody sing nice and loud and stand and uh, sing praises of the Lord. Two verses on there, didn't I? Yeah, I only had two verses in the book. He tricked us. Three verses. All right, page 87 on the same book, Silent Night. And this says, well, I think it says, what it say, four verses on there, Alan? Yeah, All right, fantastic. We'll do uh, all four verses then. <clears throat> Yeah. 
Yeah, favor hymns and phrase books. It's in a uh, on page eighty-seven. for today is for unto us a child is born unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace Isaiah 9 6 Amen. so do I have to continue telling everybody about the YouTube app no, I think you're good do I have to keep reminding everybody about the bunk call system? <laughs> I think you're good. <clears throat> I will continue to remind everybody, if at all possible, you know, please donate to the, um, the youth group. Um, if at all possible. <clears throat> Any other announcements? Anybody with this, a prayer request? Continue remember Brother Mark. I um, haven't heard anything since last Sunday, so um, uh, did, did we? When? Monday was the last report about. Uh, yeah, they didn't give me the last report. Okay. Uh, the last report we got was that uh, first he, they put him on the ventilator because he was breathing. Well, they took him off the ventilator and uh, then said the doctors came in and told him that he could go back on the ventilator if. He needed to, and that the quality of his life 
would never get any better and that he'll never be able to walk again. And that's what the doctor said. Okay? So let's just keep our faith up. Amen. Continue to pray. It's not going to hurt us. We're not going to lose one lady there you go. by holding on to the miracles of God. Amen. It's not going to hurt you one bit. Amen. Even when Satan tries to get into your head, tell him that. It's not hurting me one bit to continue to, to hold Mark's arms up as he goes through. We're going to ride it all the way, one way or the other. Amen. Okay? And in doing so, our faith as the church will build up and we'll be able to pray for others in that same kind of prayer. So that's the report that the doctors say, but we believe different. <coughs> we Amen. believe different. So continue to keep him in our prayers. Amen. And then the came in. Oh, yes. of payment, remember to pray for them as well. Yes. Any others? Yes. Um, we need to keep Marsha Lesby in our prayers still. She made it to Christmas. She's with her family. She's not going to die on Christmas, but her time is soon. We need her Savior. Especially those who need that need power and stuff like that. He and I also forgot to mention uh, on Friday I was at a client's house and we're meeting next door. Glenn Simmons died. He died a couple days for Christmas. Her daughter and her granddaughter were there and all the family and they had stopped them to be there to comfort them and just keep him in mind. They just lost their mother. to uh, request Charlton Paul, he's like family to us, uh, he's battling cancer and all that stuff, so keep him in prayer. Anybody else? Do you remember me and my mother? Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Sarah? Mm -hmm. Put all these on our heart as we go before the Lord this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We glorify our great God this morning. We thank you for the greatest gift that you could have given us, which was your son, Jesus Christ. Father, we just thank you so much for it. And we love you that you're a loving and merciful God. So, Father, we come before you according to the permission and the authority of the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We come before your throne this morning with all our heavy concerns and cares. Father, we know this is a season of joy. And so, Father, we ask that you continue to bring joy upon the hearts, Father, of those this season, Father, and for a lifetime that we realize that Jesus Christ is the joy. And, Father, we ask that right now that you also bring comfort upon the family in this season as they go through these times of caring and concerns for their loved ones. We know that you are a God that is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than we can even think or ask according to the faith that works in us. We are a faith-believing church, Father, and we stand in agreement to your will. Father, now we ask a special blessing over the offerings for the perfecting of the ministry and the edifying of the saints. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. Yeah, so deep I say. Baby boy. 
testimony. We pray for my voice, and it's back. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 One of my all-time favorites. Yeah. Anybody else with a testimony or a special song? Anybody? Anybody else? All right, Pastor Chad. <clears throat> All right, good morning. Merry Christmas. Good morning. It's good to be in God's house. And um, thankful for another week. And thankful, to, as I said, thankful that uh, you all... I'll say made sacrifices to be here this morning, but I don't see. I don't think any of us, any one of us, feel that it's a sacrifice to be here. It's it's, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here. This is a birthday party. It's, it's right. It's right, Bobby. It's right, Bobby. It's a birthday party, and um, <laughs> thankful. What do you say, Alan? <laughs> I don't even know why I even asked. Never mind. <laughs> um, yeah, I am. Um, days like this you never know how many are going to be here I, I didn't think people wouldn't show up because of christmas i thought that would be part of it but the weather more than anything and i'll be honest with you i, I went out yesterday to get some things we needed at food fair and i drove in town i had not been out. i was all friday saturday in the day so i thank god for that so just i didn't make the schedule i just go by it so um, so i was very fortunate that i was up last week so i really ain't been outside a whole lot in the last three days and I got out uh, up there and I come out of the store and that literally that 30 seconds that took me from go to the door to my truck, I got in my truck and I said, I think I need to cancel church. <laughs> I like to froze to death. I mean, I literally, my, everything was froze up on me. I was like, my gosh, I can't expect people to get out in this. And thankfully, the Holy Spirit said, just, just hold up a minute. Just don't make a rash decision. So I got home and um, said a while and I thought, you know what? You know, we I actually I called Bobby and we talked a little while and just uh, different things. And I thought, you know what, we'll be here. The, 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 we we'll, uh, we do what we done. We just come up at eleven o'clock and enjoy some time together. And those that shows up, we'll spend time together and enjoy it. And uh, and thank God for each one of you that made it out this way this morning. So thankfully, you don't you don't make rash decisions on your own personal feelings because I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I let I set my truck and I was like, yes, I was like. I don't do cold weather real well anyway. You know, it's crazy coming from a hunter, but when I look, when I'm hunting outside and like this, I promise you, I look, if I look like an Eskimo, I promise you that. I mean, I know you had a long drive. You and you and uh, Robin had the longest drive here, so we give him an award out for the longest drive. We we give you give you one out, but but uh, so I'm thankful. Look, I'm looking uh, forward to that birthday. <laughs> One, one quick announcement, and um, you know, with everything that our church has been through the last uh, month or so, and don't need to go into detail, but you know, you you pray and you ask God to give guidance, you ask God to, to show the way, to you know, give an indication of what some, you know, don't say, I don't even say throw a man a lot, we just say God will trust in your word, plain and simple. Trusting that what you say is right and what decisions I pray about, we as a church pray about, we're doing okay and we're doing your will. And uh, Wednesday, we show up here to church for the Christmas program. And this was, came in the mail and opened it up. And it says, 
Hello, my mother, Betty Joseph. Anybody remember Betty Joseph? I, I buried her. I'm pretty sure I buried her not too long ago, a while back. But um, that said, wanted to leave a gift to your church after her death and asked me to carry out her wishes. Please accept the endorsed check as her gift to First Tabernacle Church. My mother was born in Ironton, and her parents were Jason and Sadie Markin. First, First Tabernacle was very important to them, and my mom attended the church for part of her life. But I can't recall the specific years of her attendance. Although she moved to Colgrove, we forgive her for that, after she was married and attended, and attended a church there. First Tabernacle was always, always held a special place in her heart. Merry Christmas and blessings for a new year, Lauren Joseph. So she sent that to me, and I pulled the check out. It's for five thousand dollars. Give the give the Lord a hand. I tell you what, you trust the Lord, you do what He wants you to do. He'll 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 take care of us. Amen. Every time He'll take care of us. So I couldn't wait to share that with the church. Actually, I shared it with the, shared it with a few guys on Wednesday that was here, but I couldn't wait to share share it with the church. So God is good, and all the time He's good. And thankful, thankful for his faithfulness to our to our church. We just continue to be faithful to him. Now, like what Robin said, it don't hurt us a bit to continue to pray for Brother Mark. It don't matter what the doctor said. It ain't going to take no no more time out of our prayer time to pray for Brother Mark because we know what God can do. And I still believe that he's going to raise him up out of that bed. I, I do believe that. I believe that from when he went up there, and I still believe that. Uh, I have to believe that because that's in my heart, and that's what I want. So. I'm praying that God will raise him up and uh, get him out of there and live a, a, a quality of life that God would want him to have. So, And I know he'll praise God for it. They did say that when he took him off the vent, uh, he praised God for 20 minutes. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, yes. for, for bringing me back from this. So, you know, uh, his faith's still there. So let's continue to pray for Brother Mark <clears throat> in the whole situation. Amen? Amen. All right. Um, I want to read some scripture this morning, and I'm going to do something different here in a few minutes. But I want to read this very weird scripture for Christmas, but let's let God lead here. In Genesis chapter 3, if you want to turn there with me, Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> Genesis chapter 3. That's the first book of the Bible, Alan, in case you're having trouble finding it. <laughs> you remember that one? <laughs> Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> Verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, speaking of Eve, Yea, hath God said, you shall not eat of the, every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest ye die. Which was not exactly true. But we're not getting into all the... the um, what she, in other words, she, she was already been in the truth a little bit. But nonetheless, she knew exactly what she was not supposed to do. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth, not, God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Amen. They, they were. And ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to her eyes, and the tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves aprons. Beginning the first part of verse 7. And the eyes of them both were opened. That's the moment. That's the time. Skip ahead several thousand years to the birth in 
Bethlehem. But for those thousands of years, there was a time that had been longed for from this moment. And the eyes of them both were open. <laughs> Wednesday night, the children sang the song we sang also, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, and I mentioned this a little bit on Wednesday, of how joyous the angels were when Christ was born in Bethlehem. The announcement was made in Luke chapter 1 that he would be born. That was a joyous time. But until that baby laid in a manger for the first time, from Genesis chapter 3 to verse, at verse 7 until Luke chapter 2, there was stress, not by God. God knew exactly what would happen. God never, God never one time wrung his hands and wondered what's going to happen. But there was a longing and there was an anticipation of what was to come. And as I think about Adam and Eve at that moment, and it says that their eyes were open, and the scripture goes on to tell us that they were embarrassed of their, their nakedness. Um, they were no longer naive. They were no longer innocent, is a better word. They were no longer innocent of the way they looked. So from that point on, there was a battle of mankind to make himself look right, if you will. In other words, make himself look as though there was nothing wrong. Aren't we good at that today? We're so good at that. We, and I'll say it this way, we come here and we all look right. We all look good. We all do try to do what's right here. But the battle's not here. This is the easy place. It's out there is when it's hard. It's out there is when we have to fake it till we make it sometimes. We have to try to make ourselves look good because we're, we know that there's down, something down deep inside of us that is embarrassed of the way we really are. That we're, the, the, that we're very um, n not innocent anymore, and we know that we're not innocent anymore. We know, as I've heard me say many times, we know what happens up here. We know what's going on in here. So therefore, we do our best to sew fig leaves together to hide our nakedness. In other words, our exposure to God and everybody else. But just in Genesis chapter 3, God was never fooled. God would never one time said, hmm, wonder where they're at and wonder what's going on. He asked them that question. He said, where art thou? In other words, where are you at? Not that he couldn't find them. He wanted them to understand. He said, look, I know that you know. Because you know that you know, guess what? You're in bad shape. So from Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, until Luke chapter 2, can you imagine from heaven to earth, and we read all the scriptures, we read all, everything, every book of the Bible up until that point, chronological order or go by the word of God, either way that they were written, there was an anticipation for that moment in Bethlehem. Last night going to bed, we, you know, we had our family thing with our, our, some of our family, and then when they left, Little Ann couldn't wait to get to bed. First time in all of history, <laughs> she couldn't wait to go to bed. We didn't have to say, we'd have to keep saying, you need her to get in bed. She's like, she's going to kiss me, so I'm going to bed. And I'm like, who are you? <clears throat> All right, you know, so what are you, what are you in a hurry for? She just smiled at me. There was an anticipation for what was going to, going to happen this morning. Five o'clock. Or was it five? Four o'clock or five o'clock? Four five five is when you started, wasn't it? I think it's five. Four o'clock you woke up and five was it five? Okay. Five o'clock you woke up and text me, text me, text me. Of course, you don't you can text me until the dogs come home and I ain't gonna hear. So finally texting we didn't even get through to me, so she called me on my phone. So I knew her ring, so I was like and of course Kim's over sleeping. She didn't you didn't bother calling her at that time. Yes, um, she did. She did? Oh, she did? Well, see, I didn't even hear her phone. Oh, she texted me. Oh, she did. Yeah, she, yeah, I'm sorry. She did text her. <laughs> From 5 o'clock until it was 7, we finally got up. Oh, hey, right. We're awful. But we was tired. Tired parents. So, so from 5 o'clock to 7 o'clock, she said, I was awake from 5 o'clock on. Tease you guys got that. 
And finally, as was, we kind of said, well, let's, let's, let's stop doing this tour. Let's get up out of bed. So we got up, and there was anticipation. was excitement, in other words. For what? For what was left? For what was, was there under that tree? That's natural. That's, that's, that's because she knew that there was possibly something under there that she wanted. She knew that whatever was there, it had to be good. So it was presence. It was something that she had been looking for, something she was longing for. That was just one night. From Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, until Luke chapter 2, thousands of years had gone by. Thousands of years, whatever, what, however long it is, I, I didn't add them up. Just a long time. Can you imagine the anticipation? So when we sang the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing, the, the children, if you were here on Wednesday, they were doing the, the sign language of the, the angels coming forward, and they were excited about what was happening. It just hit me at that moment, like, you know what? Yeah, they would have been excited. Why? Because they've been looking for this moment. They've been longing for this time. They knew what was going to happen. They knew the plan of God. They didn't know exactly how or where or, where or when it was going to happen, but they knew that it was all in God's timing. They trusted their creator. So when it was taking place, there was an excitement that was there from the angels to proclaim the birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. And that same excitement, the same longing for those that were looking for the Messiah, was in the same well, they was in the same boat as the, as the angels. We know the we know the story, we know how it goes. We'll read it here in a moment. But I want you to think about that. That well, are we excited not just for the presence? That's that's a child thing, and that's great, and that, that's good. I'm glad they I'm glad we can do that for our children. But in that same way, let's relay that same message. You can imagine how excited the angels were to see Christ come. It's the same excitement you have. As you, get, as you get your gift on Christmas morning. Many of us look forward to this day with anticipation with family, with our children, especially when they're young. As we get older, it becomes more of an anticipation of getting to spend the day with your, your family, your mom, your dad, your, your aunts, uncles, grandpa, grandpa, whoever you take time to t your, your day with. But we all, we all, of course, obviously, we should all keep in mind of the anticipation of what we really are here for. Which is why you all come out on a 10 degree day or below zero day wind chill. When there's a little bit of skip of ice on the, on the outside that we can do nothing with. And you risk yourself to come here. Because there was a reason, there was an anticipation of the excitement of being here on Christmas morning. This only happens once every seven years, right? Unless there's a leap year. So this was the day that really, really, really didn't want to cancel. Because I because this this don't we don't always get a we don't always get to be together on what we consider Christ's birthday. Or what we celebrate as Christ's birthday. It wasn't exactly the day. I don't care when exactly the day was. That let the theologians argue about that. And they do, they will, and they're always going to. Oh, you guys are wrong for doing it on that day. You know what? Besides the point, there's a day. I thank God we still live in a world today that has a day that celebrates this. That we can still say, Christ is real, Christ is born. So whether, whether it's this day or another day or in January or whether it's in the middle of July, I don't care. But we should always remember the anticipation that we've had, that we should have for accepting and knowing that the birth of Jesus Christ did happen. Because from Genesis chapter 3, verse 7, mankind's eyes were opened, and we knew that we was in bad shape. We knew that we were naked before God. We knew that we needed it. So we knew we knew we needed some kind of covering in our lives. And that's exactly what God did for them. First off with the animals, making the animal sacrifice, and then his son later making the permanent sacrifice for the sins of the world. I'm glad of that, aren't you? I'm glad that we have this day. I'm glad that we we know that we we as a group of people, group as a what we call a local assembly, recognize the fact that Jesus came, and he was born of a virgin, and he was born to say to take away the sins of the world, and that's what we celebrate today.
Amen. Amen. All right. Told you it would keep you long. Hope you got something out of that now. Not done. <clears throat> I'm a preacher, so I'm never done, right? <clears throat> I remember as a kid when I was when I was growing up, every time the preacher would say, All right, I'm almost done. I was like, finally. Another 20 minutes. Here he goes. <laughs> Here I am. I'm still there. I'm that guy again. <laughs> so four, four almost done later. Yeah, yeah, four, yeah. Four almost done later. All right. So here's what we're gonna do. I'd like for all the children to come up here. This is yeah. I, I like the tradition of reading the Christmas story on Christmas morning. Don't you? Hey, little Ann, you still got that baby doll? I know you do. Bring my grandchild up here. <clears throat> it's amazing how how uh, real they make these things look these days. Yeah. Put that baby in his manger. Let me hold my grandbaby. Drop. Look at that. Look at that. Well, she's part of our family. She can't be right in the head anyway. So. <clears throat> and that's a little... Maybe unorthodox and weird, but you know what? It's kind of been on my mind. And Jayla, where are you? Where are you? I know we have more. Hey, if you don't care, you guys kind of sit down here. Sit here down. Sit down here, just on your knees, or whatever. Now you think about what that first Christmas morning was like. Mary not really having her family around, not really having much of anybody around except for her and Joseph. And you can imagine what was happening in that, that manger scene on that first morning, how rustic. You know, we kind of have in our mind what, what, the, what the scene was like, but we, we, I think we haven't hit, hit exactly right because it was more or less a cave-like thing that was cut out, hewn out of the rock. But irregardless, he wasn't, he didn't, there wasn't a Hilton close by that was willing to take him in. There wasn't a, a Holiday Inn up the street that uh, said, "Oh yeah, oh you're going to, oh you're pregnant. Oh well, come on, we'll make sure we find room for you." We think today that if we see a woman on the street, especially last night, that was pregnant and she's about ready to give birth, do you think if you leave her sitting out in the cold, we wouldn't. I, well, I guess it's one thing humanity learned from at least take take care of them. Back then, they didn't care. There was there was I would say thousands, probably millions of people in the city at that time, probably at least thousands of people that were traveling in to pay taxes and all this. The less they, they, one, less, one, one, one less they had to worry about was fine with them. So they allowed them to put it, their, their, have that baby or go, send this pregnant lady to uh, a manger scene or a, a stall where the animals were kept. And we'll give you room in there. And you know what I like about Mary and Joseph? They were thankful for it. Think about it. They were thankful that's, that they at least had that. The Bible tells us that he wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger. And in our mind, and when in the scenes that we have, we see the, the animals kind of looking in and seeing all this going on. If you look at the blow mold, blow molds on our front yard, there's a, the wise men, which we know wasn't there at that time, but you know it's all part of the modern day scene we have. And you have the baby Jesus, and I tell this story every year. You know, we figure out how to put that blow mold set up you, you don't really know which side to put joseph mary which way which way that which way they go but i learned a long time ago if you put jesus where he goes the rest of it just kind of falls in place that's how life is that's how life is in our life we put jesus in his proper place everything just this season falls in place the way it needs to but we got to put jesus where he belongs he belongs in in the center he belongs in the center of our lives so i think it's important these three children here, and I know we've had we we have more in our, our church, but these are the ones that's here, and I know they're being taught the same thing. I'm not down; their parents not bringing them nothing at all. But I'm saying these three here. What I, what I, my goal was this morning was to let them understand how important this is for why we're here. You know, the Christmas story has been read a few times, probably already this season. Maybe you've already done it at home. I don't know, but in Luke chapter two, which is what we're going to read. <clears throat> Bible says, and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. 
And this taxing was first made by Cyrenius was, when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. See, I even have heard of that name, Ms. Savannah. Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went out to be taxed, every one unto his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. In the inn. Inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Listen to that. Don't, don't pass over the last part of that verse. And the angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people, not just them. To future generations, to us, to why we're sitting here today, to all people, should bring joy to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there arose with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Again, can't you can only imagine the excitement of the angels that was on that that had been watching mankind throughout the generations. All the sacrifice that was being made, all the laws that were given, all the laws that were broken, all the lives that were lost because the laws were broken, all the, the cases of leprosy, all the the Every, every judge, every king, everything that had been going on, the angels had watched every single episode take place. We read it as though it's a, book, a storybook, but they lived it. They lived the fact that mankind could do nothing right. They lived with that fact. They knew that them as angels watched all this. They knew that, you know what, mankind can't even fall off a ladder right. They can't do anything that is right. So when they say that they're joyful... They were joyful because they had seen all this take place and now it had finally come to a head and everything they'd been looking for, everything they'd been wanting was now taking place. They were with the, the Messiah. And it came to pass as the angels were going away from them into the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go into Bethlehem and see this thing which has come to pass which the Lord hath made known unto us. The first preachers of the, of the virgin birth were the shepherds watching their flocks by night. They said, let's go tell the good news that we've heard. Let's go see the baby and let's go tell everyone. So if we go away from this place today, wherever we go from this point, the rest of the day, get the gifts, eat the food, all that, all that junk that we do all, all day on Christmas Day, there's nothing wrong with those things. We're going to do it also. But let's go away from this place ready to preach the gospel of why, of why we're here. Hopefully, everywhere you go today, you're, you're, in, you're in light company, as we will be. We're in light company for the most part. But for those that are in our company that don't, they're not celebrating the true birth of Christ, oh, well, they may have known the truth. They may know that he's a virgin, but they may know it, but they have never come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Their relationship with Jesus Christ with this baby is not what it should be. We all have people in our family just like that. They'll celebrate the Christmas. They'll celebrate why we celebrate Christmas. But they have yet to come to a relationship with Jesus Christ in their heart. Let this be the day that we live that life in front of them. To not get caught up in everything that's going on. Be, don't be mad because you didn't get this or you didn't get that or whatever. And just say, you know what? That's not why we're here anyway. So we go away from this place. Kids, I hope you guys... I know you guys understand. You guys live in Christian homes, so I know that you understand. You know. But from this point on in your life, never, ever, ever 
ever forget why we celebrate Christmas. Presents are good. I like presents. I like presents too. And nothing wrong with those things. But Jesus Christ is the reason why we do what we do. Amen. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, as we very humbly bow our heads before you this morning, we thank you, God, for watching over and keeping us through the night, through this cold weather we've been having. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for giving us a warm place to be. And God, we sincerely pray for those that, that have nowhere to go on these cold nights. Can't imagine. Just can't imagine the pain of the cold and having nowhere to warm up. I pray for those folks, Lord. Pray for that you'd help us, God, in some way figure out what we need to do, what you need us to do. God, to bring them into the warmth, not only for their body, but for their soul. I pray, Father, that as we go out into our places of social today, places we go to our families, that that same cold that the people are experiencing, that we've experienced the last few days for the weather, that same cold is in people's hearts. God, they've never, they don't know how to come into the warm place of Jesus Christ. They don't, have, they don't understand what it means to lay your head down on your pillow at night with joy in your heart, knowing that if you never wake up, we wake up in a place called heaven. And it's all started in Genesis chapter 3, verse 7. You give us in your word that mankind fell. But in Luke chapter 2, you give us a reason to smile. You give us a reason to be joyful. And you give us a reason to be the first preachers of the gospel message of Jesus Christ being born. I pray that you keep us safe. We travel today. Bring us back to our homes tonight, God, safe and sound. And God, at the end of the day, we'll still raise our voice and hearts and minds and give you praise, honor, and glory for allowing us to know that your firstborn son was, your, your, your son was born in a manger in Bethlehem. And we serve him, we love him, and his death, burial, and resurrection on the cross of Calvary gives us a hope beyond this life. And it's in his name we pray and we ask these things. And amen. All right, let's all stand this morning. Thanks, guys, for coming up sitting with me. All right. Hope everybody uh, has a good time today, enjoys one another, enjoys fellowship with uh, your families, and uh, we'll see you on Wednesday. We're finishing up probably this Bible study, so come out and be with us on Wednesday, 6.30. Got that nailed in my head, 6.30 on Wednesday, 6.30 to 7.30. All right, let's all bow our heads and be dismissed, and Brother uh, John, would you care to dismiss it, please? Amen. Amen. Y'all be careful out there.